How do you plan to write a story? Uh, you make a big mess and then try to pluck the good stuff out. Uh, I sit down with a legal pad and I write down little tiny bios, uh, lines, um, basic stories, conflicts, secrets, all that kind of stuff. And I don't like, like it's not neat. Like there's circles and lines and scribbles and stuff to X'd out. And, and I only use one side so I can just keep going. And then I will go back through and, okay, that's kind of interesting. That's sort of good. That's kind of interesting. All this stuff I'll get to. And I, no lie, have stacks of yellow legal pads that are from projects. And like with the vampire mob, I had to, I had to, I never plan on writing how the main character became a vampire because I wanted to, it was the screenwriting thing of starting as late in the scene as you can. So I wanted to start after he was a vampire when his mother-in-law moved in for eternity. I thought that was more fun. So in the uh, vampire mob issue two, I have a little 10 page mini comic that is the origin story of uh, the main character. So this is him before he was a vampire and why he became a vampire. And it was something I never shot before. And so I'm writing the comic book and I go back to the legal pads from 2009, 2010, and I'm going through and I'm like, oh yeah, that thing, that's where I'm gonna go. And I'm boom, just found a way to do it. And it was literally a line that ended up in season one uh, that was something about doing the whole light at the end of the tunnel thing. And I'm like, what's in the tunnel? What's in the tunnel? And that was enough to just go. So I think when you're building a story, it's, you're, you know, your character has to want something, have obstacles and all that stuff. But I also think like, you have to have fun making the character do stuff. Like it's the old, get your character in a tree and throw rocks at them. Um, like this should be fun for the audience. This should be fun for you. This should be fun. Like if it's drudgery, like I never felt like a drudgery when I was writing except for one screenplay because it wasn't my idea. And Sorry to inter interject, oh. but you said secrets. Mm -hmm. From your time as a private investigator, did you start to realize how important secrets are to what makes up a character? What drives people? Uh, I guess when I worked as a private investigator, I had to call people pretending to be someone who didn't exist, using a name that wasn't mine, calling from a company that wasn't real, with a story that was completely made up so I could get information. Social engineering? Social engineering. So that is a hard thing to teach someone how to do. And I almost think it's kind of like you have to learn in the trenches. Um, so I, I guess what I learned being a private investigator was it's like being a con man. It's a confidence game. So I could change my voice, change how fast I talk, change my tone. Um, I would always say my name, the company, and where I was calling from. Because if you give all the information out front, then they're like, okay. And then you start giving them the bullshit. And then you start throwing them what I call misdirects, which are questions that you do not need the answers to. Because you have to stack up the conversation to be thick enough to not have those questions light up like, why is he asking me this? Because it's like, oh, all these other questions and oh, this thing just drop You drop it in and you kind of ride the conversation like a wave and you just drop stuff in. And sometimes you're like, I got to force this wave. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I am a really good liar, <laughs> I guess. And I, and it was storytelling. I was telling people stories. I was making up you know, I had my lines down and sometimes, you know, people would come at, come at me and I would have to come up with another story on the spot and be able to cover it. So I was, I was investigating a guy who was in court with the client. So I, we, we used to call these cases, uh, the crazy shit because this is a crash and burn. You go in, you either get the information or you don't. 
This guy's in court. He he's gonna know most likely that you are calling from the other side because he's in court. So I call from the other side. I got a great thing, and this guy starts slamming me. He's like, "What's what's the phone number?" I give him the phone number. What's the main number for your company? I don't know the main number. How do you work at a company and not know the main number? Uh, sir, I'm a temp. I walked in there this morning. They put me down in a, a cubicle. I'm sitting down. I have this phone number right here. So what I need to do is get off the phone with you, get on the phone with my manager, ask him what that phone number is, and then I will call you back with that number. Is that all right, sir? Yes. So I hang up. I call another investigator. Here's the deal. The name of the company is this. You're my boss. This is what we do. Click. Call the guy back. Okay, sir, here's the number. Oh, you know... I'm just in the middle of this whole thing with lawyers and I just thought you're one of them. What did you need to know? Blah, blah, blah. It gives me everything I need to know. Because the suspension of disbelief is a real thing. It happens in the real world. So they suspend their disbelief that I'm not who I say I am. And they give me information that why in God's name would I be asking that? So the story, so you have to know who they are to figure out who you are, because you've got to figure out some something that is either not symbiotic at all or potentially symbiotic, because you need some, some reason. It's either I need something from you, maybe you need something from me, we're going to help each other out. It's um, social engineering. So having been on... Um I don't want to say that side, but having been aware of, of some of that, and now we're in this new age of people's secrets coming out and it's instant on, on social media, do you feel that that's an integral part to doing a backstory on a character? Yeah, I think the when I was working as a PI, I knew people would Google, and I knew that we needed to keep track of all the pretexts to make sure nothing got burnt. So if a pretext gets burnt, it means they somebody has figured out exactly what happened. They know exactly who did it. They knew they were lied to. They know they know the whole deal, and they go online with it. Then that's burnt. You can't use that anymore. That story is garbage now because somebody else is going to Google it and they're going to find it. So now you got to change up your names. You got to change up your your story. Now what was the question? So just secrets being an important part of a character's backstory and a character's motives and a character's arc. Yeah, I think there are things about uh, like characters in Vampire Mob, even the characters in Play Shorts, uh, the other series I made that I know about them that nobody else knows and no one else will know. Like I know there's a big overarching thing with Vampire Mob and I know what it's about and no one else does. And I know what the end is, and I don't know if anyone else will ever know or need to know. But I wrote, I wrote an hour and fifteen minute third season screen time, so I'm translating that into comic books. So I have I have a lot of stuff written that's already done. So I have all these secrets that I'm getting to sort of drag into more stories and some that we haven't that we will learn actually so you think that's okay to do with characters to have the writer has their secrets in the back pocket they have their own file on them so yeah, to speak yeah but the audience isn't privy to that no. that works yeah i think i think the audience the writer needs to know more about the character than the audience will ever know or could know because you're not going to have the time to explain all this shit about them so if you have, you know, uh, I can't remember, it was a psychology thing of like where, where you are when you're 16 is pretty close to who you are. Most of the developments happen. Not that there's going, you know, more education changes, maturity, all the rest of that. But the baseline is about there at 16. So if you take your character to 16, if everything's there, what happened to put it there? So it's literally just going back and, okay, well, if they're, if they're doing this and they're in this kind of job or in this kind of situation, then they most likely came from this kind of background that would bring them into this world. How? And then you sort of reverse engineer it and then go back. Because sometimes I think my mistake was not knowing enough about characters when I started writing stuff. I knew like I thought I knew bare bones about the character and I needed to know way more. And I and I don't mean you have to like write an entire bio, but 
you need to know a bunch of stuff about these people because when you're writing about them and they're saying something and the other character says something and their response is specific because of who they are, specific because of the secret you know. It fuels that response. If you don't know that, and maybe it will come out in the screenplay or whatever the presentation you're using, but it's, it's the work that actors do when, if I give an actor a screenplay, they have a script and they have the words to saying, they sort of know the situation, maybe they ask a couple of questions, but then it's going back to, they have to create that character. What kind of shoes do they wear? Where, you know, where did they grow up? What kind of school did they go to? You have to, all this stuff that's not gonna be on screen because it will show up on screen, both in writing and in acting. There's something about the grounding of a character knowing, you know, where do they live? What, you know, what does the room look like? That kind of stuff. What, do they have books on the shelves? Do they not have books on the shelves? Do they listen to music? Uh, were, were they ever involved in a crime? All this stuff and it just builds and builds so you have, and, and you need that for everybody. Your minor characters need to have some interesting stuff going on. Otherwise, they're just window dressing. And they're not that, you know, especially when you have minor characters who are so interesting. They're almost more interesting than the main character. And, and, you're only, and they're only there for a little bit of time. To make that happen, you need to know a lot about that character. That character's got to have something going on. Maybe they have the secrets that the, the person's looking for. Um, I just, if you're not writing something and it's fun, if it's not fun, you're writing it, it's not fun. Why are you writing it? Like if it's, if, okay, I'm writing this. I don't enjoy this at all. I'm, I'm hoping it sells when it sells, then maybe I'll start like liking writing. Like <laughs> that's a horrible plan. <laughs> that is, you better like writing because you're going to be doing a lot of it. And a lot of it is not going to be seen. A lot of it's going to get rejected. You're, and also, you're going to write. I know I've written some shitty stuff. Uh, my first book will hopefully be better because of all the other stuff I've written. But it's still not going to be the best book I've ever written because it's my first book. But I, I, I know there's screenplay structure in it. I know, like, I can feel, I'm like, I can feel the first act. I can feel this is kind of what puts this into place. Here's the sort of midpoint. Here's the big second act plot point. And now we're just putting everything down. And, and it's so great writing without a budget. I don't have to shoot this. I don't have to find this location. I don't have to figure out somebody who knows how to use drones. Like, <laughs> you know, it's so much easier when you're just like, la da 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 da. Oh, you know what? A house. It can be whatever kind of fucking house I want because I'm not going to fucking find it because I'm not going to fucking shoot it. Yay! that's a nice freedom to have but also when the audience experiences that story when you're reading a book you're in their head in a different place than when they're watching it on screen um most likely they're not going to jump you know when they're reading the book and they're like oh you know that's probably not going to happen they'll do that more on screen they might go oh my god huh. but it's not going to be that that visceral you know when you see an entire movie theater jump at the same time that's not going to happen if they're all reading a book. What, Ever. Do you, what do you think the audience wants from a character? That's, I think it's different for every audience. Um, because we are at a, an interesting point in history um, and the world seems a little extra dark, um, Maybe we don't need more dark stories, or maybe we do. Uh, I think there's something, you know, I, people go to scary movies to be scared because there's not enough real scary stuff in their life. Now there's a bunch of real scary stuff. So I'm wondering if they still need that scary thing, especially when you need to go to movie theater to be scared, which is scary just to go to the movie theater at this point in history. Um, I think they, I think people need characters who are inspiring, but not in a, a quote way, not in a self-help way, not in a hero, but you know, sm small, like I love um, characters who are in episodics who you get to see go through a bunch of stuff. 
And because it's such a long movie, it's an 18 hour movie, so you get to see them go through all these different things that you wouldn't if it was in a much shorter amount of time. And then, and because now you're fed the whole, here's, here's the 18 hours, here's this whole season, go watch it. And then you watch it and they're like, so how much longer for the next one? Three years? What the hell? But you'll wait because you binged. You were into it. You were, there was nothing else. It was just you and those characters and on that trip and, and, uh, and it was fun. And now you want to see what happens to them in the future. I think that's, uh, I think, yeah. Comedy is going to be more important than it ever has been. Um, and it shouldn't be looked on as being frivolous. Just because dramas are seen as more important, comedies uh, help more than dramas do, uh, I think. Because we need way more laughing now than we did before. And not that drama doesn't have a, you know, you want to get lost in their world and cry your brains out great, but I think a lot more people are uh, going to be looking for comedy. So we want something in a character that we can kind of like latch on to, whether we see ourselves in that character, whether that character is classically good or bad. Right. And do you think that's why Big Little Lies was such a, well, there was such an appeal? Because at first you just kind of saw them as these women that, I you know. I never saw the show. Oh, you never saw the yeah. show. Okay. All right. But I, I guess what has, what I've always wondered was why do people have an interest and spending time with a hitman. Like I wrote a story about a guy who kills people professionally, that's his job. And people like him. Like his character is likable at some degree. Um, the Sopranos? Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's always Godfather, all of the mafia stuff, it's always been there, but it's, but when you break it down, <clears throat> when you actually like go bird's eye view, like, why am I so interested in this guy who runs a crime family who has anxiety attacks? <laughs> like, well, why am I so... has a bad so... mother-son relationship. Yeah, <laughs> and, why, and why am I going to watch it when it's on on Sunday night at the right time? Like, that, that is... Um, that stuff's never, you know, it'll never go away. Martin Scorsese's got another one on deck. And it's, you know, I think the crime stuff is never going to go away. Procedural or procedurals have never gone away. And it seems like there's even more now. People love the crime stuff. 